Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Jason here, and this is Valheim on Xbox. I am playing on a Series X. I wanted to show you guys how the game, you know, if, you've, if you're brand new to Valheim, or if you just want to get into the Xbox version of the game, I want to show you guys this game and how good it is. I love the game. Played it a ton on PC, playing it on Xbox right now, as you can see, there we go. Xbox right there, but I mean, there's a couple things I would like, I would tell you guys to kind of fiddle with and change. So go over to your controls. You have a classic and console. I prefer the classic. It kind of changes some of the buttons, like what does what. So I would say go with classic, but if you prefer the uh, console version, go ahead, do that one. I like the classic feel of it. The other thing I would say is go over to your graphic settings and you have a choice between performance and quality mode. Quality mode will up up the up the uh, the lighting a little bit, but as you can probably tell, this game is not like a graphic powerhouse. It's not going to look better. You're not getting like extreme detail or anything like that. Most of this is going to affect your resolution and your lighting effects. So I would always prefer performance because you're going to get a locked 60 frames a second. However. That will change if you have like a massive base because you can build bases in this game. You can build homes and if they're huge and ginormous, it's going to kill the frame rate. But other than that, the frame rate is really, really steady at 60 frames a second. And again, you can kind of change like your sun shafts, all this kind of stuff like that. I never play with depth of field or chromatic aberration. I don't like it, but you can choose whatever you want. So we're gonna go for performance mode. And then you need to create a character. So I have this one I've already made, but let's change it to uh, a new one. So we're gonna start a brand new character just for this. Kind of show the, uh, you know, you have basic stuff. Again, not graphically intense. You don't have to worry about, oh, this is gonna be so freaking, you know, hard on my Xbox. It's not, it's all about the lighting. So yeah, we'll go there. We go, you got your different hairstyles. You know, I like the, uh, where's the long hair with the, where is it at? Oh no, side swept. Look at all this hair stuff, okay. Let's go long, there we go. Ponytails, nope, we do neat braids, nope. There we go, long. Yeah, we'll do long. All right, and then we have your beards as well. And of course, if you if you go with the female, you know, option, you're probably, I mean, let's see, do they have beard? They don't have any beards for the female, so you can't have a bearded female, dang it. That's all right, one day, one day. All right, let's get in here. Gotta get the cool big beard. Look at that long beard. And you can also do your hair tones, like different uh, variations on your color and how blonde you wanna be or how, you know, how bright, basically how bright you want the color. I always go with like a uh, copper look. I like that copper color. Anyway, and then we have to enter our name. So of course this is gonna be Jason <laughs> Plays. And because I already have a Jason Plays, we're gonna be Jason Plays the uh, NMS because that's what I usually go with on uh, my social media. So we'll do that. That way we know it's different and we're done. So now that we have our character, we have to start a world. This is gonna be very similar to Minecraft. So you see how I have, I have a couple different worlds here. I have a testing, I probably could delete that. Let's delete the testing one, yes. So you could start a brand new world. So if you want a new one, press Y and you have to enter a name of it. I, you know, we could just do this one. I love Metal Gear Solid. So we're gonna call this one Outer Haven. Boom. And then you have a seed. So if you want to have my world, you can copy this seed down. Or if you just want to generate a random one, you could totally do that as well. So by default, it gives you a random seed. It'll just generate a random one for you. And that is just basically how the world is generated. So you're going to have a different forest, different meadows, different... All your regions, all your islands will be different depending on your seed. If you want to just go with that seed, go ahead, do it. Whatever one you want. So now we have our outer heavens. So we need to select that world. And because this is the first time we're loading into it, it's going to give you the storyline. It'll load you up at the spawn point of the world, which is the center of the world map, which is really, really cool. And I mean, it's going to be different. You know, your your uh, island might look different than mine. If you use a different seed, it's just like Minecraft. 
If you want to use that exact seed and play the exact same area, you could do that as well. It's very, very cool. You could also play in co-op. So if you want to play with someone on Xbox or even PC, it's cross-play. You could totally do that as well. You're going to have to invite them and do all that stuff. Then you have to join your game. Or you can join theirs, however that works. Long ago, the All-Father Odin united the worlds. He threw down his foes and cast them into the Tenth World. Then split the bows that held their prison to the world tree and left it to drift unanchored, a place of exile. For centuries, this world slumbered uneasily, but it did not die. As glacial ages passed, kingdoms rose and fell out of sight of the gods. When Odin heard his enemies were growing once again in strength, he looked to Midgard and sent his Valkyries to scour the battlefields for the greatest of their warriors. Dead to the world, they were be born again in Valheim. Sadly, they could only find Jason in this whole crowd. <laughs> so yeah, you are a Viking warrior brought to Valheim. And there you go, Valkyrie actually drops you off in your map, so it'll fly in. And on PC, you're able to grab the uh, the map. Right now, I can't do anything other than pause. So you can't really skip the intro either. On PC, you can. So there's small differences. There's little conveniences here and there. But 99% of the content is shared across platforms. So if you've seen it on PC, it'll work on Xbox. It might work in a different way. Like emotes are a little bit harder to do on Xbox. We do have emotes, by the way. You can do emotes if you want. It's just a little bit more of a cumbersome thing. It's more of a, uh, an irritating, frustrating way to do it, but you can still do it. Here we are. So they'll drop you here, and then you have your crow, your raven, Hugin. He will give you tips on how to play the game, like what you should do next. Welcome to the 10th world, warrior. I am Hugin, sent here to guide you in your travels. The megaliths surrounding the sacrificial stones are sacrificial stones. They represent the Forsaken, which you must slay in order to ascend to Valhalla. So these are the boss stones. Whenever you beat a boss, you have to come here and put their trophy up. That way you gain their power. And here's the first boss right here. He should pop up. There he is. Uh, these magical stones are scattered throughout the lands by Odin as signposts pointing toward the ritual grounds of the Forsaken. If inspected closer, this one will reveal the summoning place of Ekthir, your first prey. He is a mighty beast, so you need to properly arm yourself before you even attempt to defeat him. So this will show you the first boss. This is going to be Ekthir. Oh, and it just automatically, I hate that, it automatically did that. So now it's going to... I'm going to misspell all of this. Ekthir. Um, why would you do a G? Ekthir, there we go. So, I don't know why. We'll remove it. There it is. There that one. There we go. There we go. So, that is your boss symbol right there. But if you want to, you can literally zoom out. And that is the world, and it is massive. This is just the one little island we're on. And so, that's your spawn point. It's always going to be the center of the map. Always the center. So now that we know we have to go fight Ekthir up there, we need to actually go find some materials. So the first thing you want to do is get some trees. Now you can try to punch this one, but too hard. You, your fist cannot hurt that tree. You could probably hurt this one. Yeah, see, I'm doing zero. I'm not doing anything to that. So you need to start out with the small trees like this. Just to get your, uh, your wood, you need wood and you need stone to start building your foundational like equipment. And as you pick up stuff, look at that. It, it gives me the blueprints, the recipes for items that I can build. Now that I've picked up wood, I know what I can build with wood. So, and it'll progress as you pick up stone, as you pick up the more advanced materials, it'll unlock all of your blueprints on how to build with those items. Let's talk to Hugin again. He'll tell you exactly what I just said. Take stock of your inventory. Oh God, we have an enemy here. Now these guys will come out day, night, doesn't matter. They come out more at night. So you'll see more of these little enemies at nighttime. And then Hugin disappeared. Oh no, Hugin's gone, right? Well, if you ever need, like if you didn't read something or if you don't remember what Hugin told you, you can always go into your inventory, which is why. And you have three different menus. You have your inventory menu at the top left. You have your uh, compendium menu over in the uh, top right. And then you have your crafting in the bottom right over here. So if you go to your compendium, you can actually go see what Hugin messages right there. 
Inventory. Most items must be crafted. However, due to your recent departure of Midgard, you will have to recall the true shape of objects. Just pick things up and it will all come back to you, I'm sure. My lesser brother, Munin, tells me one can fashion a stone axe out of wood and stone. So basically, hey, hey if you want to build some, you know, stuff, here's a, her basic one, but you can get farther in once you uh, start building the basics. But you can go to any note you want. Any Hugin note will be in here anytime he comes and tells you stuff. Also, it'll tell you active effects. So like if you're wet and you have, because if you're wet, you actually regain your stamina really slowly. If you're poisoned, if you're on fire, all that kind of stuff will be in your active effects. Your message, that'll tell you, you're a wet, Hugin, it'll give you the actual order of things that popped up. And then here's your crafting menu. So right now, because we don't have a crafting station, we can only build really basic stuff, like a club and a torch. That's all I can build. But as we start picking up stuff, like, let's look around for some stone. We need some stone. Now, you can't pick up this stone because it's, you know, a big solid piece. You can't break it. But you'll see the little tiny stones over here like this. There we go. Pick up that little tiny rock. There we go. So now I can make a stone. Well, I, I don't think I can make a stone axe. Let's get in here. Yeah, see, I need more stone. I only have one. You need four in order to make an axe. But the secret is, guys, if you want something better, don't go for stone at first. Go for a flint. So you'll find flint near water. So hopefully... Now, this is a random map. I don't know where my water is. Yeah, I'm not seeing any water around here. Dang it, I was hoping maybe we were close to some water. You'll find it eventually, because there's just massive islands that you're on. But there's no there's no water nearby. That's okay. So we can actually build our axe. Okay, so we have a stone axe. In order to build it, you need to go into your crafting menu and build it. Now, don't worry about building more than one. You can always repair this axe. You're going to need a workstation, a workbench, to repair it. But you can repair it. So now it's in my hot bar. And if you're in your inventory, this top bar right here, the top, that is your quick action bar. Basically, that's where you can activate items. So anything in here, you can activate and deactivate and that kind of stuff. So now that I have my axe up here, oh, there's mushrooms right here. Let's pick up mushrooms. This is food. Food is very important in Valheim. So you don't need to eat. There's no like hunger meter. So you don't, you won't die if you don't eat. However, you will get more powerful the better the food you are eating. So let's see, a Hugin should have popped up around here somewhere. There you are. You have a tasty morsel. You have found a snack. Consume it to improve your health and stamina. Be aware that before long you will grow hungry again. So try to always have at least a couple of different uh, meals ready to go. Okay. Thank you, Hugin. Let me pop this guy. Now, you can use your weapons. I'm not, I'm not going to use it because I can't make a bench yet, but you can just go after them with your fists if you want to. And they'll drop some items for you. All right, so if you're getting into food, every food gives you a, a different bonus. So if I eat this mushroom, it'll give me 15 health and 15 stamina, and that will last for 15 minutes. This raspberry will give me 7 health, but it'll give me 20 stamina, so it'll give me more stamina and less health. And it will last for 10 minutes. And as you progress into the game, you will actually get more advanced food. So, like, if you cook meat, it'll last a little bit longer. If you, uh, if you cook, like, different stews, if you, if you mix foods together, once you start getting crafting stations, you will actually get more, uh, more beneficial food. It'll last longer and it'll give you more health. But right now we have the basics. We have a mushroom and a uh, raspberry. And you can only have three foods at a time. So three different items. That's all you can pick right now. And I think that's the maximum ever. Like you, later on, you won't get any more. Your stomach is only so big. You can't, you know, you can't go out and, you know, get, eat a whole bunch of food later on. There we go. Oh, and you'll see, I've been, no you, if you've noticed, I have different skills that are increasing, right? As I'm chopping wood, my wood cutting goes up by a level or two. See, anytime you get that little glowing halo around your head, you're increasing your level. Let me make sure. Oh, of course, there's a guy coming. Hit this guy. See? Boom. Oh, come here. Don't run away. See, now he knows. He's like, oh, no, this guy actually knows what he's doing. Come here. Come here. Don't do it. There we are. Beautiful. So, if you go back into your menu, your compendium menu, the top right-hand side of the screen, you have different options. So, you have your Valheim compendium, which is anytime Munin or... Uh, 
or Hugin, or uh, like your active stuff like that. All that stuff is right there. But you also have your skill menu. So these are all my skills. Most of them are going to be zero because I just started the game. But you'll see like my axes. That's at level two. My wood cuttings at level three because I've cut some wood. My fists because I've killed some enemies. I've, I'm at level four. This is all really cool. Now, you will increase your level steadily as you do the actions. Like as I cut wood, my level for cutting wood will go up. However, when you die, like if I get attacked and I get killed in the game, you respawn, you drop all of your items, so all my inventory will drop right exactly where where I die, and I will lose a little bit of my skills. I believe it's 10%, so my, uh, my fist will go down. I'm at level 4. It'll go down to a level 3, you know, or a level 3.5 or whatever it is. It'll, it'll lose 10%. You'll lose 0.4. You know, but... That also plays into how high your level is. If I'm level 100 and I die, I'll lose 10 levels. I'll go down to level 90 because I'm losing 10%. So as you get farther in the game and your levels get really high, it is way more hurtful when you die. <laughs> like right now, if you die, it's not a big deal. You can level up pretty quickly. But once those levels, because I mean, once you get past level 10, it's really hard to level your skills once you get past level 10. And, you know, you really got to, you know, keep doing that over and over, like running and jumping and chopping wood. You got to right now, if I chop down one tree, I'll gain a level later on. Like when I get to level like 20 or 30, you need to chop down like 100 trees. So it starts really ramping up the difficulty on how easy it is to level. There's also a uh, uh, stealth mechanic here. So if I if I'm creeping up on uh, animals, like if I want to creep up on a deer because they have really good leather, they have deer hide. You can make some really good weapons and some good uh, armor with that, but they run faster than you, so you want to creep up on them before you can, you know, attack them. All right, so we are slowly building up. Now, what we're going to need next is we need to build some shelter. So I would always recommend explore the map a little bit because you'll find, like, abandoned villages that already have pre-made buildings, and that'll help you out because building a, uh, a home here... It's going to cost you a lot of wood. You're going to be chopping down a lot of wood. But you can also, you know, you find these random buildings that are kind of abandoned. And sometimes you'll find items in there. There'll be a chest in here. I think there's a chest up there if I saw right. Yep, there's a chest up there. However, I don't know how to get up there. So what I can do is I need to make a hammer. Because a hammer lets you build items. So you need three wood, two uh, stone. Let's build that real fast. There we are, and now we have now that we have our hammer, we know what we can build with it. Look at all that stuff we've learned. We know how to make a workbench. We know how to make all that kind of stuff. So the first thing you want to do with your hammer is make a workbench. So if you press A while you have your hammer equipped, it'll bring up your building menu, and it gives you all your basic stuff that you know how to build right now. And as you build more stuff, you'll get more uh, recipes, more blueprints. So let's build a workbench. It needs to be in a flat area. And if you hold down the left trigger, you can rotate it. See, so you can position it in a, in a way that looks better to you or whatever. So if you need to rotate it a little, little bit like that, there we go. Now we placed it. So now we know how to build a whole bunch of stuff. Now that we have a workbench, this lets you build a lot of stuff. Look at all that stuff. We're, we learned walls. We're learning flooring. We're learning roofs. We're learning everything to make our basic uh, building. That way we can shelter out of the rain and the elements. And also, a building will protect you from enemies. So the enemies won't attack you unless they see you. They have to physically see you. So if you're in a building, you're okay. Let's talk to Hugin. You have built a workbench. The workbench allows you to craft complex items as well as giving you access to a lot more building pieces to construct within the hammer. Okay. There we go. Boom. So now that I can build things, let's build a staircase up here because there's a chest with items in there that I want. So what we're going to do is go to our building section, our um, our actual base building. Let's go to a ladder right here. So here's a ladder. We can kind of line it up here. And let's do, we'll place it right there. And now I can jump up this ladder. Now there is no free roam camera. Like in No Man's Sky, you have a camera that kind of, you can unlock the camera and fly around a little bit. You can't do that in here. You have to be... Your character has to be able to look at the item it's building. It's more of a realistic take on the building menu. So you can't, you know, like, unlock the camera and go wherever you want. 
All right, so we got up here. Let's open this chest. And, oh, it has money in there. So we have our coins. We can take that. We also have some amber. This is not used for building anything. It's more for selling. So all both of these items we can take and sell it. You can also click in your left thumbstick. It'll take everything in that chest. And so there you go. Now, the other reason why you want to build a workbench is you can destroy anything, even prefabricated uh, buildings. So if I pull out my hammer, I can destroy this by hitting the right bumper. And I'll get, the, I'll get all the materials back from it. So you don't lose anything. So if you put something down on accident, like I accidentally put a wall, you don't have to worry about, oh, I just lost all the materials. No, it gives you everything back. So all you gotta do is destroy everything. There we go. Now you'll see it takes a little bit of your stamina to do it. So if it doesn't allow you to, it's probably because you're out of stamina. You're out of breath because you've destroyed a whole bunch of stuff. So there we go. I just destroyed that building. I got all the wood from that. Beautiful. Oh, we need to destroy this uh, workbench. That way I can take it with me wherever we go. We need to find a good building to hang out in, though. So that, let's go do that. Do I, do I hear Hugin? Oh, there's Hugin right there. What's going on, Hugin? What's going on? You crafted a hammer. With this tool, you will raise mighty halls and towering fortifications. Start by building a workbench. Oh, there you go. I skipped that one. I didn't, I, I didn't see him. Dang it, Hugin. I didn't see you earlier. So they give you a lot. Oh, wait a minute. Whenever you see a mushroom, especially early on. Later on, you won't need this as much. But right now, pick up all the food you could possibly find. And what I tend to do is in my menu, I will uh, I will move my food over to the right-hand side. You don't have to do this. It's whatever your preference is. But I like having it there. That way I can quickly, while I'm running around, like right now, I'm about to run out of food. If you see the bottom left-hand side of the screen... I have two minutes left on my raspberry and seven minutes on my mushroom. However, you see how they're flashing? Once your food gets less than half of the duration, then you can eat again. So if I need to, I can refresh that. That way I don't forget about it. It'll slowly, you know, you don't need to, but if you want to, like if I'm just now, like I'm not in action, I'm not fighting anybody, I'm not fighting a boss right now, so I want to take advantage of this calm moment, I can just eat real fast. And it'll fill my meter all the way back up to 100%. That way I don't have to worry about it. Let's see if we can find some prefabricated uh, buildings. Oh, wait a minute. We found the water. So, you can swim in this game. However, it takes up a lot of your stamina. And, like, I won't be able to swim over to that island. I will drown before I get there because I don't have enough stamina. But you can. Like, if I wanted to, I can totally get out here. The only problem is you, you become wet. And if you're wet, you are, you know, your uh, character is in a bad mood. It's like, dude, now I'm wet. I, you know, if you go into your actual, uh, into your compendium, under effects, it says wet. It lowers your health and stamina regeneration. Your health regen is un down by 25%. Stamina regeneration is 15. Eater is ma magic meter. That's 15 as well. So there you go. Resistance versus fire versus frost versus lightning. There you go. So I have those going on as well. So that, yeah, whenever you're wet, your character is just in a bad mood. And the way you can warm yourself up is making a fire. If you sit next to a fire, it'll dry you off really fast. But what I want to try to do is I'm going to try to make the stone. Oh, we're going to look for flint. Okay, flint right here. It's more of a white or a grayish instead of a dark gray. It's a light gray stone. And it's... uh. It's more shiny and longer than a regular stone. A stone is like rounded. Whereas a flint, a piece of flint is going to be, you know, more oblong. Oh, there's enemies right here. So be careful of those guys. Oh no, that was fish, okay. Never mind. that's an enemy right here. So there's neck, which are, you know, enemies. They're like lizards that live near the water. They'll attack you. But you can also get their meat, just like you can attack a uh, deer, you can attack uh, the pigs, they call them boars. You can do all that, but I see some buildings over here. So, and it is getting dark. At nighttime, you get cold, especially if you're wet. So you don't want to mess around at night if you don't have to. Get this guy. Give me some meat. Here we go. Oh, look at this guy trying to sneak up on me. Get out of here, you. This little grayling. Here we go. Got him. So let's pop over here. We're going to make some shelter now that it's nighttime. Oh, God. So, yeah, see, this is prefab. 
not really helpful, though. But, I mean, we could put a fire right here. Look at all the stone. So this was someone's little, like, uh, cave, if you want to say, or like a campsite. So let's make a fire here. So we can go... By default, it brings up the last thing you tried to build, and that was a ladder for us. But we need to go back into our uh, bench or our menus. We can build a fire right here. There you go. You can only build fire on the ground like this. Later on, you'll get more advanced, uh, you know, more advanced warming features. You'll get like a, a hearth and stuff like that, or hearth. But right now, we just have our basic like fire, and you can fuel it with uh, with wood, of course. So if I just let it go, it'll eventually run out and it'll be dry, basically. So you need to put some fuel on your fire. And there we are. We have this, but we need to build some walls. So what we're gonna do is let's build a. Um, Let's build a workbench. That way we can start building some stuff here. There we are. And now that we have a workbench, we can kind of go through and destroy these, use the wood. Oh, we got some core wood. That's some really good wood. All right. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. But yeah, core wood is stronger than normal wood. Core wood is harder to get. You have to... It's a more advanced wood. It comes from the, uh, the thicker trees later on in the game. But it's a prefabricated building, so of course we can get some core wood out of there. We're flattening all this. There we go. Oh, this one right here. So now what I want to do is I want to build my house around this. I mean, you can use prefab if you want to. But we need a roof over our, uh, over our workbench because right now you can't use it unless there's a roof on it. Yeah, there you go. So it needs to be inside of a building in order to be the most useful. So let's build a building real fast. Just real quickly. So right there, right there. Two, now we're gonna have some enemies. Now that it's nighttime, and we're gonna have some enemies coming out. Now I'm near a fire, that's why I'm warm. But if I, if I decide to go out here, watch this. You feel cold, and if you're cold, again, you have status. It's gonna actually, health regen is under 50%. Stamina is under 25, so you minus 25%, and magic eater regeneration is 25% lower. So you wanna stay warm. So that's why another reason why you don't wanna go out at night until you have more advanced armors. You can make like fur armor later on in the game, and that will actually protect you from the cold, but right now we have nothing, so. We need to make sure to build some uh, some buildings around here. <laughs> so let's do that real fast. We collected a lot of wood from all of our stuff. So we should have enough for at least a basic building. Oh, if I can connect it right. There we go. Connect. There we go. And again, if you want to rotate something, left trigger. If you're using my control scheme, it might be different for yours. And again, if you ever need to know, go into your settings... Go to your controls, and they'll tell you right there exactly what you need to use. There you go. So, depending on your control scheme, I am using the classic. That's why it's left trigger for me. We need to build a roof on this. Now, this will count as a roof. Now, be aware. You see how that one's blue? Watch this one. If I put a piece up here, it'll turn green. Blue means it's 100% stable. It's on the ground, or it's touching the ground. So, therefore, it is 100% stable you don't have to worry about it once you start building off the ground it'll it'll start getting more or less and less stable so if i put another piece up here let's see come on oh yeah i see you got to get that good angle on it there we go that'll turn less green like it's almost like a yellowish that one's deep green that one's more of a yellow green and if you the higher we go the less stable it gets now in order to make more stability you can add core wood you can also add these uh poles in here to stabilize it so if i do this put it over on the outside it'll actually stabilize it more there we go oh we need to actually yeah look at something it's not touching the ground that's why it's green dang it but i can also add some angles here hey, hey. oh wait. sorry i didn't select it you gotta select it there you go and this will add stability so this will actually keep it stable and then we can add this, like a straight up and down beam. So this is very, you know, basic stuff. If you want more advanced stuff, talk, go watch Beeble Bum's channel. It's the B-side channel. 
he goes really in depth on how to build some amazing stuff. I'm just going through some of the basics. Therefore, there you go. Now that's more of a darker green because it's more stable. You have stability on your uh, platform, on your uh, stuff. That's what you want to do. So hopefully you guys liked the episode. If you did, hit that like button. And I will see you in the next one. Hopefully we get a little bit farther in the next episode. So I'll see you then.